Volkswagen Group now owns a number of brands, something that allows them to sell a number of different cars. Cars that they couldn't sell under the people's car name. And there are a number of cars which have suffered a lot because of the Volkswagen's badge, such as the Phantom or the Touareg. But the car that has suffered the most is the W12. Concept cars come and go and most of the time they are forgotten after the show. But some concepts are really remembered and talked about, and the W12 is one of the best examples of this. The purpose of the W12 concepts was to promote the W engine, which Volkswagen has started developing in the late 80s. The W engines weren't a new thing, they had been around since the early 1900s, but they were only used for motorcycles and small airplanes. Only by the 90s the W configuration started appearing on cars, and the first car that would showcase the benefits of the W engine was the Audi Abus. Named after the legendary German circuit, the Abus was an impressive concept, not only from the design, which was inspired from the famous Silver Arrows of Auto Union, but mostly for the performance numbers. According to Audi, the 6-liter W12 engine could produce 509 horsepower and could hit a top speed of 335 km per hour, while could hit 100 in just 3 seconds. A big part of this of course played the quattro system and the lightweight construction, but these numbers were never proven since the Avus didn't have a working engine because Audi was still developing the W12. Instead, Audi had just put a wooden model of the engine. For the rest of the early and mid-90s, Volkswagen and Audi would continue to develop the W engine, with developing a range of engines with 12, 16 and 18 cylinders. But they never showed the power to the public since the engine was far from being ready. According to Volkswagen, the engine was only going to be ready by the early 2000s, with plans to use the engine on top Audi models, like the 88 which was just introduced in 1994. And wanting to show the power of the engine, Volkswagen CEO at the time, Ferdinand Pisch, assigned Intel Design to come up with a supercar that will show the power of this configuration. Volkswagen and Intel Design had worked together for a long time, with Giugiaro being responsible for some of the most important Volkswagen cars, like Passat, Golf and Scirocco. But by the 90s Giorgetto San Fabrizio was responsible for most of the supercar designs, and like with Inasca and Shigera, Fabrizio did an amazing job. Even after 23 years, it's hard to find a car that would match the look of the W12. And one of the most interesting things, in my opinion, is that looks like the Synchro was a huge inspiration for the next generation Volkswagen cars. The car made its debut at the 97 Tokyo Motor Show, and without a doubt was the star of the show. The Synchro was powered by a 5.6 liter W12 with 415 horsepower. Initially, Volkswagen told the press that they were planning to put the car into production, by building 200 cars with a base price of $175,000. But it's highly doubtful that Volkswagen had real plans to put the Synchro into production, at least under the Volkswagen name. Because in 98, Volkswagen Group started its buying spree, by buying Bentley, Lamborghini and Bugatti, and with names like this, the Synchro just had no chance going into production. At the 98 Geneva Motor Show, Volkswagen presented the W12 Roadster, which like the name suggests was just a Roadster version, while 8 months later they presented the Bugatti EB118. The EB118 was also designed by Tal Design which in 93 had designed the EB112, and the designs were quite similar. But most importantly, the EB118 also used the W engine, 
this time a 6.3 liter 18 cylinder with 555 horsepower. While one year later at the 1999 Geneva Motor Show came the EB218, which was the four-door version of the EB118. But the start of the show was the hundreds of Bentley. The hundreds basically would set the plans for the future. The hundreds was powered by the 8 liter W16 with 625 horsepower. The car got a lot of attention, but Volkswagen had no real plans to put this car into production, since Bentley was supposed to be the luxury brand, while Bugatti and Lamborghini were supposed to be the high performance ones. And this was shown at that year's Paris Motor Show, with the 18-3 Chiron and later with the EB18-4 Veyron, presented at the Tokyo Motor Show. But one year later Bugatti presented the EB16-4 Veyron, which dished the W12 for the 8 liter W16. Also in 2000 came the Ross Meyer, which at least from the looks was the most hardcore one from the W16 concepts. From all these concepts only the Veyron made it into the roads. And the final car wasn't that much different from the original 16 cylinder concept. And when it looked like Volkswagen had forgotten about the W12, they decided to bring it back in 2001. But this time came with its sole purpose to showcase the power and the performance of the W12 engine. Finally, after years of development, the engine was ready and Volkswagen was looking to make it the flagship engine of Audi and Bentley. This engine was basically the answer to the S600 of Mercedes and to the 760 of BMW. The capacity was increased from 5.6 liters to 6 liters. While stylistically the car didn't change much except some minor tweaks to make it more aerodynamic. The car again was shown at the Tokyo Motor Show. And Volkswagen was still claiming pretty bold numbers about the car. But they had proved nothing. And so on February 23rd, 2002, they took the car to the Nardo Ring, trying to break the 24 hour record. And they broke more than that, covering 7,740.576 kilometers at an average speed of 322.891 kilometers per hour. They also broke 11 more records, which is really impressive. Again, Volkswagen promised to push a car into production, with a limited run of 50 cars with a base price of $200,000, which really sounded like a bargain for a car with numbers like this. But like we all know, the car never was produced. It's very hard to believe that Volkswagen was really considering to put the W12 into production, especially when they could make way more money by putting the engine on cars that they were already building. Only in 2001, which was the first year of the W12 engine, they managed to sell more than 700 A8s. And this was at the end of the first gen cycle. After the A8, the W12 was also used on the Phantom and the Touareg, but also was used on Bentleys, like on the Continental GT and on the Flying Spur. The Volkswagen W12 is without a doubt an interesting project. Despite a big interest on the car, it's hard to say how the market would have reacted to a $200,000 Volkswagen. The Phantom proved that no matter how great a car is, the badge is very important when you spend more than $100,000. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time.